in the matter of James Bowen and others versus Commissioners of Police of the Metropolis. Lord Lloyd-Jones will explain the judgment of the court. This appeal raises the question whether the Commissioner of Police for the Metropolis owes a duty, of, a duty to her officers in the conduct of proceedings against her based on their alleged misconduct to take reasonable care to protect them from economic and reputational harm. On the 2nd of December 2003, the respondent, four police officers serving in the Metropolitan Police Service, took part in the arrest of a suspected terrorist, B.A. B.A. subsequently made allegations that the officers had seriously assaulted <coughs> and injured him during the arrest. On the 18th of October 2007, B.A. commenced civil proceedings against the appellant commissioner, in which he alleged that the commissioner was vicariously liable for the serious assaults that he alleged the officers had inflicted on him. The officers were not parties to these proceedings. The trial of BA's claim commenced on the 16th of March 2009. The officers declined to give evidence voluntarily without special measures to protect their identity being put in place. On the third day of the trial, the claim was settled with an admission of liability by the Commissioner and an apology for the gratuitous violence to which BA had been subjected by the officers. The officers maintain that a press release issued by the Commissioner after trial was tantamount to endorsing their culpability. On the 23rd of September 2013, the officers commenced the present proceedings against the Commissioner, seeking compensation for reputational, economic and psychiatric damage. They advanced three claims. First, that a retainer had arisen between them and the Commissioner's legal team. Secondly, they maintained that the Commissioner had assumed a duty of care by reason of assurances given. And thirdly, they argued that the Commissioner owed them a duty to take reasonable care to safeguard their safety, health, welfare, including economic and professional welfare, and reputational interests in the preparation and conduct of the defence of BA's claim. On the 1st of May 2015, Mr Justice Jay struck out these claims. The officer's appeal to the Court of Appeal was successful in part. The Court of Appeal held that it was arguable that the Commissioner owed a duty of care to the officers to safeguard their economic and reputational interests and that this extended to the Commissioner's conduct of the litigation. The Commissioner now appeals to the Supreme Court solely on this issue. The Supreme Court unanimously allows the appeal. Although police officers have no contract of employment, the officers relied heavily on the analogy of the implied term in employment contracts of mutual trust and confidence between employer and employee. However, the court was not referred to any decided case in any jurisdiction which holds that, that the duty of care for which the officers contend can be derived from this mutual implied term. To derive such an obligation would be to move substantially beyond the specific derivative duties established in previous cases. The existence of the proposed duty must be established in the tort of negligence. This is clearly a case in which it is sought to extend a duty of care to a new situation. In determining whether such a duty should be recognised, the law will proceed incrementally and by analogy with previous decisions. See the recent decision of this court in Robinson and the Chief Constable of West Yorkshire Police, 2018, UK Supreme Court 4. The proposed duty will also be tested against considerations of legal policy and the coherent development of the law. The common law does not usually recognise a duty of care in the tort of negligence to protect reputational interests. The decision in Calverley and the Chief Constable of Merseyside Police, 1989, one appeal cases 1228, strongly suggests that there is no such duty in the present circumstances. The fact that the recognition of a duty of care may potentially subject an individual to conflicting duties does not necessarily preclude its imposition. But in such cases, it is necessary to have regard to the competing underlying policy considerations. The interests of an employer who is sued on the basis that he's vicariously liable for the tortious conduct of his employees differ fundamentally from the interests of those employees. The possibility of contribution proceedings between the employer and employee highlights the potential for conflicts of interest. These stark differences in interests strongly suggest that it would not be fair, just or reasonable to impose on an employer 
and duty of care to defend legal proceedings so as to protect the economic or reputational interests of his employees. In the court's view, it's not realistic to suggest that this potential for conflict can be overcome by recognition of a duty of care up to the time at which the actual conflict arises. Moreover, in the context of the present case, the Commissioner's public duties are inconsistent with the imposition of such a duty of care. Considerations relating to legal policy and the practical conduct of proceedings also weigh heavily against the duty for which the officers contend. In particular, parties to a dispute should be able to conduct litigation in order to resolve their disputes without fear of incurring liability to third parties. For these reasons, the appeal is allowed. <laughs>